What's up guys? How you doing? So what's up guys? It's your boy Motard Steve bringing you another video. Now first and foremost, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the positive vibes and the good feedback on my 701 one year review video, which if you haven't seen it, click this little thing up here and go check that out. Now, in that video, I said something about how I broke in my bike and the fact that my 701 has zero oil burning. You know, and most 701 and 690 owners are like, wait a minute, why doesn't your bike oil? My thing eats freaking oil like a fat kid eating candy bars, man. So I s promised you guys that I would make a video explaining all this and breaking down how I break in my bike so you guys could possibly learn about how you should go about breaking in your bike. So first and foremost, what is oil burning? Oil burning is the act of oil getting past your oil ring seals that up, sit up against your cylinder and getting into your combustion chamber and burning up. Now, most people figure this out when they do an oil change. They know exactly how much oil's in there. They just did the oil change, they checked it. They go ride for 100, 200 miles. And you know, like any good motorcycle rider should do with keeping up with maintenance, you know, you should check your oil every so often before you go ride to make sure it's at the proper level so you're not going out and riding with no oil in your engine because that's just a problem you don't want. <laughs> and you know, you may check your oil and be like, whoa, wait a minute, where's all my oil? My oil looks low in the sight glass or, or my oil's low on the dipstick. Jeez, I, I feel sorry for you. If you guys have a bike, bike with a dipstick, I had a Magna like that, I hated it. I'd rather have a sight glass, but anyway. So you notice, where'd my oil go? Chances are, it burned up. Now, oil burning is a lot worse than you having to fork out money to top off your engine all the time. Oil getting in the combustion chamber is bad because you're introducing contamination and deposits to the combustion chamber that shouldn't be in there. That's how you end up with like carbon deposits on your valves and stuff like that. It's just generally not a good thing to have happen. So what is the number one way to avoid oil burning issues with your bike? Ready? Drum roll. Proper engine break-in. The main point of a proper engine break-in is to make sure your oil rings seal very well around your cylinder. Therefore, when your cylinder goes through its combustion process, the oil is scraped off by the rings and the oil stays where the oil's supposed to go and the combustion happens where it's supposed to happen. You know, that way your oil stays where it's supposed to go and doesn't leak into the combustion chamber where it's not supposed to be. It wasn't invited. It's that guy. Nobody likes him around. People in the combustion chamber are like, hey, yo, bruh, that oil needs to stay out of here. We don't like that guy. All jokes aside, that's what happens. So you may be thinking, well, why should I listen to you? You're not an engine mechanic. You're not an engine builder. You're not even a certified tech or anything like that. Why should I listen to you? Well, you know, at the end of the day, I can only pass on my personal experiences that has happened to me with this break-in method and what I've witnessed from other people. I had two friends buy a 701 at the, pretty much around the exact same time I did. One was a 2017 model, exactly like mine, and one was a 2016 model. They both have oil burning problems. And with the 2017 that my friend has, we have pretty much the same amount of mileage. He has a little bit more, but we have right around about 7,000 and a half miles. And his eats oil, mine doesn't. The big difference between it, I broke mine in very methodically and very carefully, and he just kind of rode his bike. And I get it, I get that. You get a brand new bike, you don't want to think about how you want to break it in. You don't want to think, you don't want to bother your head with all that. You just want to be like, man, I got a new bike, I want to go rip. Well, you really should. If you're buying a brand new motorcycle with zero miles on it, you really should think about how to break it in because it's one of the most important things you can do for the longevity of your motorcycle. So I'm going to go ahead and explain my break in. Well, it's not really my break in, but more on that later. But the method that I use to break in is what you would consider a hard break in. Now, so many people are so ignorant to this topic and they're just, they think, they hear hard break-in and they picture a guy pegged out in six gear doing like 150, bouncing off the rev limiter for like 20 minutes at a time or just ripping wheelies as soon as they take off on the bike. That is not what this break-in method is. What this is, is a methodical method to create pressure early on on your oil rings so everything seals together tight against that cylinder. First thing you need to do is you need to make sure you have the right kind of oil in your engine. And when I say the right kind of oil, I'm not talking about brands, I'm not talking about certain weights. Another thing you wanna do is just make sure you have conventional oil, 
not full synthetic. Full synthetic oil is amazing and is a great oil to run in your bike and I highly recommend it but after the break-ins finished. The reason for that being is full synthetic oils, as great as they are, they actually do their job way too well. And when it comes to break-in, the main thing you're trying to do is you're trying to get friction into those oil rings so they seal properly. Basically, your cylinder has kind of like a rough finish to it. I'm not gonna say it's knurled or anything, but it's kind of like that. It's, it's not a perfectly smooth finish like you think it would be. It's got a little bit of a rough finish to it for a reason because when pressure builds in it, it pushes against those rings and helps rub them in. I mean, think of kind of think of it kind of like a, a file, I guess. And that's why a lot of people see metal shavings in their oil because legitimately there are little metal shavings from the break-in. Full synthetic oils, like I said, are too slippery which means you can't get the right amount of friction you need to really break it in. That's why I do not recommend running full synthetic oil for the first 2,000 miles. If you don't know if your bike has full synthetic oil in it or not, I highly recommend you drop the oil immediately before you ride it and you put whatever conventional oil you like in it. That way you're 100% sure that it's conventional oil in there. And be honest with you, if you do that one thing, you're already a step in the right direction and you're a step above everybody else. So that's exactly what I did. I put Rotella T4 15W40 in my bike and that's what I used to break it in. It's cheap. You can buy two and a half gallons of it for 20 to 30 bucks from any Walmart and it is Jazzo MA rated as I will show you here in a second. Now, like I said earlier, hard break-in has nothing to do with engine speed. It is not about trying to just speed down the road and break your bike in. Obviously that would be very bad because you'd probably end up with lots of tickets and have your bike impounded and your license taken away before you even get to enjoy the thing. But it is about loading the engine up and deloading it. What I mean by loading it is like hard acceleration. I'm not talking about full throttle pinned, hitting the rev limiter, shift to the next gear. No, I'm talking about taking it up through the gears aggressively and then a lot of engine braking to slow down. And now I will show you some live examples. We're gonna go out to the bike and I'm gonna show you some footage of how I rode for the first 25 to 50 miles to really set those rings in. All right, so real quick before we get started, guys, I mentioned using conventional oil versus synthetic oil. This right here is what I use to break in my Husqvarna 701. Now, yes, Rotella T4, I know what you're thinking, oh, it's a diesel oil. If that's your thoughts on it, don't be ignorant. What you need to be concerned with is the ratings on the back. More importantly, right there, you see that rating right there? Hopefully the camera's picking that up. Jazzo MA MA2. That is the rating you are looking for. As long as your oil has that rating, it's safe to use in a wet clutch. And as you can see, for braking, you're gonna change the oil a lot. You're gonna need a lot of oil, so boom. I think this is like 20 or 30 bucks, two and a half gallons. Pretty sure that gets me like, got me five or six oil changes. Matter of fact, I think there's still leftover oil in there. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do, obviously, is you're gonna to wanna to let the bike idle for a little bit before you get on it, just to make sure it's up to operating temperature. And depending on how cold it is in your environment, maybe ride around just a little easy for about a minute just to kind of let everything circulate and warm up to its operating temperature that is the most important thing before you do this kind of hard braking is make sure your engine is thoroughly warmed up i recommend you get to some kind of open area where there's not a lot of traffic where you don't have to worry about a lot of people getting in your way for instance this road doesn't have a whole lot of traffic, so this road should be all right. Like I said, speed is not the important thing. The thing is pressure. So for instance, the speed limit's 45 here. Right there is what you're looking for. You don't have, see, I'm not even getting close to the rev limiter.
this is how you want to try to do your first 50 miles. Now I know what you're thinking, this is kind of an unorthodox way to ride on the street and I'll admit, yes it is. That's why a lot of people say it's good to break a bike in on a dyno or to break it in at the track. The track or the mountains is an amazing place to break in a new motorcycle. Just because of the geography of the roads, it's a lot of constant acceleration and an engine braking because you know, the turns and everything going on. But you can do this if you live in a neighborhood or a road, like this road's 45. I can get a little bit of speed before I hit that road. So this would be a way you could do it if you don't have access to a track or something. But you'll notice this break-in is not me just pegging it off the rev limiter and going absolutely nuts. Like I said, it's not about speed, it's about creating pressure. So right here, the, the downshifting. What that's actually doing is any files that are being made are getting sucked off the cylinder and getting put back through the system and through the filtration system. But you'll notice, this break-in is not me just pegging it off the rev limiter and going absolutely nuts. Like I said, it's not about speed, it's about creating pressure. So right here, the, the downshifting. What that's actually doing is any files that are being made are getting sucked off the cylinder and getting put back through the system and through the filtration system. So if you got like a city area or a rural area that has a lot of little short roads branching off of it and you can kind of make yourself like a little loop out of it, that would be good too. Just disclaimer, when you're on the street, watch your speeds, watch for cops. It's probably not the best place to break it in considering that slowing down abruptly is going to throw people off behind you. So like I said, try to pick a place that doesn't have a lot of traffic or activity. For instance, no one's behind me right now, so if I want to slow down, I can safely. I know it looks retarded. It kind of makes you seem like you're trying to be a jackass and just make a lot of noise, especially if you have an exhaust like mine. But most of you, when you're braking in a bike, at least you'll have the benefit of, chances are you don't have an aftermarket exhaust yet. So see, this is what you don't want to do. Same thing as this. This isn't what you want to try to do. This isn't a hard braking right here, just holding high speeds constantly. That doesn't create enough variation and pressure against the rings to create the friction in the vacuum that you need to break in the rings and then suck all the debris that gets created off of the cylinder. You can break your bike in in like second or third gear. Seriously, you can just sit in the second, accelerate up through second, shift in the third, accelerate to the top of third, let off the gas, engine brake, shift down to second, engine brake, repeat that process over and over again. That's why I said if you have a rural area with like a straight road that does not get a lot of traffic, you can literally just go from one end, do the process of accelerating and slowing down, get to the end of it, turn around, do it the other way. As far as city traffic though, this is kind of how you would do it. It's just a methodical and aggressive way of breaking in your bike. So as you can see, like I said, you don't have to speed. You can literally break your bike in properly and just, just by using two or three gears. You don't even have to get in the top gear to break it in properly. And like I said, this is going to create a lot of metal shavings. Metal shavings mostly will be picked up by your oil screen and your oil filter, but there's going to be some that slip through because I mean, we're talking, we're talking like dust almost, dust almost in your oil. 
So you want to change it often because you don't want that stuff in your transmission gears, in your seals, and every other place where they don't belong. So drop your oil very often. The way I did it is I dropped the oil at 25 miles, which is where you're going to notice the most oil shavings. Your oil is going to have like a gray kind of glimmery thing to it. Don't don't freak out. That's perfectly, perfectly normal. And that's actually kind of a good thing because that means you're breaking in those rings, which is what you want. If you drop it at 25 miles or something and you don't see any kind of like glimmeriness, you need to start riding a lot harder. You're not riding as hard as you think you are. 50 miles, drop it again. Again, you're gonna see some pieces. Me, when I pulled my oil screens out, I seen a couple little like metal flakes here and there. That's perfectly normal. My bike still runs fine, case in point. It's not bad, don't freak out. It's perfectly normal. I dropped it again at 100 miles, then I dropped it up to 400 miles. See, as you can see, you kind of, you can start bumping it up little by little but you still want to change it pretty frequently so i went to 400 miles dropped it went to 800 miles dropped it 1200 dropped the oil again when i hit 1800 miles i dropped it and then i switched to full synthetic around 1500 to 2000 miles you can switch over to whatever full synthetic you want to run at that point your oil rings are broken in they're really set good if you've been following my advice of varying engine speeds and hard acceleration and engine braking they should be broken in perfectly fine at that point. Then you can switch over to your more slippery full synthetic oils. And then, so lastly, the big question that probably most people are here for, how do you fix oil burning if your bike already has the symptoms for it? Well, there's two ways that I can tell you. One, you really kind of have a 50-50 shot of completely eliminating it. If anything, you might make it a little bit better you don't have to worry too much about it. It may burn a little bit less oil, but if you already have like 500 to 1,000 miles on your bike and you haven't been really breaking it in in the way I have described it, then chances are it might be a little too late for you to completely fix it. What you can do is you can try, if you've been running full synthetic oil, try, try switching it to conventional oil. You'll add some friction back and maybe, maybe, you'll be able to set those rings in better. And at the very least, you'll be able to like lower the amount of oil your bike consumes, hopefully. But like I said, there's no guarantee. Every bike's different. It really depends on how you've been riding it and whatnot. The second way, which is pretty much guaranteed in my opinion, to make sure you don't have oil burning, it's gonna be costly, but you basically have to do a top end rebuild. What I mean by that is you've got to drop a new piston in it, with a new set of oil rings. What this does is it lets you start back off from square one with a clean slate, which means you can drop that in there and you're basically back to where your engine was brand new off the showroom floor. You can then put conventional oil in it and then, like I said, follow the steps of loading the engine up and engine braking. And at that point, I guarantee you, you won't have any more oil burning problems. Like I said, that may not be the answer some of you were looking for, but it's the only one that I can honestly think of that is pretty much guaranteed to work. That's why it's very important to research when you're buying a new vehicle, how to break it in, things like that. I'm just passing my knowledge on to you guys. You can take that with a grain of salt. You can think I'm stupid and don't know what I'm talking about. But like I said, the facts are there. My bike doesn't have oil burning and a lot of other people with the same bike have oil burning. What happened is when I bought my 2017 701, I read up a lot on engine braking. And one of the people that I followed and got this method from is known as Moto Man. Basically, he is an engine builder that's really dealt with motorcycles and breaking them in, and has really did a very good job at documenting the benefits of a hard break-in and the negatives of an easy break-in. Like he says, most of your engine issues can be traced back to an improper break-in. Now, I could sit here and literally make like an hour long video going through his whole web page if that's what you'd want me to do. But I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you guys if you wanna read it from top to bottom and just, and like I said, it's really extremely detailed. And there's lots of photos, there's lots of picture proof and stuff like that. He shows you a lot of cylinders and he shows you ones that have been properly broken in, what they look like, and he shows you ones that have had oil blow by or oil burning and shows you what they look like. So if you wanna go check that out, go check it out in the description. But with that being said, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to click that subscribe button, click the bell icon, and while you're at it, 
go over here, click one of these little video tiles, go check out some of the other featured videos here. I'm sure you guys will find something you enjoy. And at the same time, right here is a button you can click to subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate the support, guys. Well, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later!